falling leaves drift by the window the autumn leaves of red and gold I see your lips the summer kisses the sunburned hands I used to hold Since you went away The days grow long And soon I'll hear Old winter song But I miss you most of all My darling Rather me Start to Where you been? Wintering in Monte Carlo? <laughs> I've been working day and night, just like you, Millie. It's good to see you again. Be with you in a minute. Make yourself comfortable. Okay. Present for you. Sorry, I ain't had a chance to socialize much. But I've been hearing you type yourself silly. It's one of those rush jobs. He's coming by to pick it up any minute. What's this? Well, it's a bundle of typing somebody dropped off for you. Left it with me by mistake. I'm glad someone made that mistake. Brought you over here. You don't want to be one of those people who drop by once a month just to collect the rent, do you? If you're going to behave like a landlady, then I'll have to treat you like one. I'll complain again about that squeaking door. That's life. If it ain't a squeak, it's a squawk. You sit right where you are, and I'll fix us both a cup of hot tea, and we can drink your squeaks and squawks away. I wish I could. But I ain't even got time to breathe. I gotta rush over to see my brother again. Did you ever meet him? I don't know, did I? The one who married that blonde Payne from Alabama? Tall and skinny, but all muscle? My brother, I mean. Well, at least you have a family. That's something you can't win on a quiz show. Those guys are never late. Come in, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have I come too early? Nope, it's all yours. Oh, that's great. Simply great. It's all finished. 126 pages. Isn't it great? How should I know? I ain't read it. <laughs> I mean, Miss Weatherby's speed. It's, it's incredible. Now I can get this to my publisher in New York over the weekend. Gosh, I don't know how to thank you for this special effort. I'd like to give you something beyond the customary fee, but... Please, Mr. Ramsey, there's no need for that. You always pay your bill on time. I'm glad you're happy. Wait. Here. Two tickets for tonight. Of course, I assume you like good music. Oh, I do very much, but uh, thank you, no, I, I couldn't accept them. Well, my lady friend doesn't care much for that music. Oh. Uh, please? Please. Oh, Symphony Hall. This is very kind of you, Mr. Ramsey. Not at all. I, I hope you'll enjoy yourself. Thank you. <sighs> oh, yes. I never thought this would come out to 126 pages. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Your manuscript. Of course, I'm sorry. Thanks again. Let me see those tickets. Second balcony. Why, that cheap crumb? Liz, whatever you're going to say, you're wrong. He's just poor. This is a very sweet gesture. But the second balcony. Any higher and you'd get a nosebleed. Uh... You're the undefeated world's champ when it comes to believing these chiselers. He could at least ask you out. Or did he just want to save the bus fare? He almost did ask me out once. 
Well, now, ain't that something? What stopped him? What? That's the story of my life these last ten years. He was so sure I was all tied up with so many of my, as he put it, gentleman friends. <laughs> what gentleman friends? Liz, didn't you see that mob out there waiting to take me out? Hey, what kind of tea do you drink? I've been told so very often, you're so attractive, so lovely, so this, so that. Then they assume I'm all tied up. All tied up. Makes me feel like I'm a package and I'm left alone. With my typewriter. If you ask me, you give them the brush off. But don't ask me why. Maybe I'm just too choosy. Maybe you're just plain scared. Whatever the reason, I have two tickets for the second balcony tonight. Be my guest? Thanks, Millie. I'd love to, but I can't for nine reasons. First, I just can't stand that kind of music. What happened to the other eight reasons? And there's my brother. That did it. I'll go alone. I'm going to get out of here and make a night of it. To each his own. Well, anyway, it's better than sitting here holding hands for your lonesome. Believe me, I ought to know. I'm an expert on being alone. Yeah. I've gotten used to living alone, too. That's why I'm going to get out of here. To the recital. I'm going to Symphony Hall and have myself a ball. Gardenias, gardenias, one dollar. Gardenias, madam. Is it possible to exchange two balconies for one orchestra? Yes, ma'am. One orchestra.
Uh, chicken salad, no bread. Anything to drink? Tea, coffee, no, no thank you. Uh, you uh, mind if I join you? Please. I'm awfully sorry. I'd prefer you didn't. Oh. I didn't mean to sound rude. I just thought that if you were alone, well, uh, this is the only empty spot in the place. Empty, except for you, I mean. I still prefer you didn't. I only ask because there's really no other place to sit down. Well, I'm, I'm accustomed to sitting. I mean, I prefer to sit alone. Oh, that's all right. I can wait for you to finish your salad. But I don't want to... Ha I'd have to gulp it with you waiting. No, no, don't do that, please. You just take your time. I can uh, stand. You get used to standing in the army. Well, if you're going to stand there, you might as well sit here. That is, if you're going to stand there. You, uh, sure, sure it's all right? I suppose. You know something? You're lonely. Lonely? You're being rather presumptuous. My private life is personal. I'm just stating a fact. You can correct me, I'll stand corrected. But, uh, sitting down. Joke. It's no disgrace to be lonely. Nowadays, everybody's lonely. Look, I'm tired and my feet hurt. That isn't why I'm glad I'm sitting here. I'm glad because you look like somebody I'd like to talk to. To listen to. Really? Mm-hmm. But you know what I see in your face? Fear. Why? Because you don't know me. Now, that sounds reasonable, but, but frankly, that's cockeyed. You shouldn't be afraid of me. Well, I think it's merely a matter of opinion. I think... I don't know what I think. I'm sorry, I'll keep quiet. I, I won't talk anymore if you prefer. I do prefer.
Yes. I didn't say anything. But the way you were staring. Um, no, I, I promised I wouldn't say anything. I better shut up. But you were staring at me. No, not at you, at your purse. Oh. You're the one who played that song, aren't you? Yes. I like your taste in music. Oh, uh, now, about that purse. Purse? Mm-hmm. Well, not exactly the purse itself, but if you were to drop it, no matter which way it came up, you'd always know it was yours. But may I? Up, down. Either way, it's always the same. M, W. Well, is that a reason for staring? Mary Walker. I beg your pardon? Mildred Williams. Oh. Am I right? No. Well, not Martha Washington. <laughs> no. Millicent Weatherby. Millicent Weatherby. Millie? That's right. Bert Hansen. Formerly Sergeant Hansen, the United States Army. Oh. How do you do? How do you do? Well, what are you going to have? Um, the same as Miss Weatherby, uh, quick chicken salad. Right. Except now we don't have to gulp. Do we? No. No? Relax. Am I tense? Mm hmm Look, you're stuck with me for the duration of that salad. You, you might as well enjoy yourself. Go ahead, talk, say something. Anything. Well, I'm not very good at this kind of, well, at casual conversation. <laughs> sure you are. You haven't stopped talking since I sat down. Are, are you teasing me? Mm-hmm. Like I did about your purse. I just want you to relax. Why? So we can talk. You see, people don't realize how important that is. Not just talking, but talking to somebody who listens. When you're the best listener since Matsui Kyoto. Since who? Matsui Kyoto in Tokyo. Twelve-year-old kid. You sell those uh, paper dragon kites? I take it you were with the army in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Honor Guard headquarters. No battle action, no hero stuff. We never even left Japan. But with what I learned as a supply sergeant, I'm going to do fine in this town. You work in L.A.? Yes, three years now. I like L.A. I'm going to make good here. I'm sure you will. Where are you from? Before the Army? Mm -hmm. Racine, Wisconsin. You ever been to Racine? No. Were well, you native Californian? No, I'm an immigrant, too, from New England. I have two sisters and a brother back there and their children, but... I can't imagine anyone ever leaving their family if they're lucky enough to have one. I never knew my mother. My father died when I was so high. Hey, let's not depress each other, okay? Okay. And there's the other side of it. A fella sits down next to you you've never seen before. All you know about him is he spent a couple of soft years in Tokyo and kidded you about your monogram purse. Now, all of a sudden, he's trying to show off and pick up the check. And that's the kind of a character you've got a perfect right to be suspicious of. Frankly, I think our relationship will last a lot longer the first time you pick up your own check. Okay? When I finished business school, I could type 70 words a minute or more. Then came the secretarial jobs. But I don't know, I found it more fun to work at home. I like the feeling of independence. Maybe it's just my New England heritage that I'm so frugal. Living and working in the same place means you only have one rent to pay. Why, I, I haven't stopped talking since we left downtown, have I? And the way you've listened, you're not polite, you're heroic. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. Live and laugh, that's what I always say. Agree? Sure you do. Hey, this is very nice. 
Hi, Liz. I'd like well, to... Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, my brother. Tonight they dragged me to the beach, him and his wife. They wanted to fight and get some fresh air at the same time. So I went along. They made up as usual. And where am I? Getting sand in my shoes. Oh, oh, Liz, I'd like you to meet uh, Bert Hansen. Please, I'm sure. <laughs> Excuse me. But I've got sand everywhere. Who's the character? Liz Eckhart. She's the manager. She always dressed for Halloween in the middle of the summer? <laughs> that happens to be one of her most conservative outfits. I'll tell you something about her clothes, though. They grow on you, and so does she. This is it, huh? Mm-hmm. This is it. Well, good night, Millie. Good night, Bert, and thanks. Wait a minute. into date without giving you a present. <laughs> hey, you're your own boss, aren't you? Why don't you give yourself a half day off tomorrow? Oh, I'm not used to taking time off when there's work to do. Well, you could give yourself a break. Do me a favor at the same time. We could go to the beach, okay? That would be very nice. Oh, that's great. I'll pick you up at noon. Oh. Goodbye, Millie. Oh. <laughs> Be seeing you, Liz. Liz? Settle down in there permanently. Hey, you're not going swimming in that, are you? Well, I, I sunburn very easily. Well, that's too bad. We uh, should have brought along a little a suntan lotion. There we are. Do you like it? Well, that's a nice suit. But then look who's in it. Come on. I'm glad we came on a day when there are not too many people, aren't you? Hey, wait a minute, Millie. They send you those photographers. We want your picture for the Rodeo Bureau. We don't want them to know that it only costs $12.95 when it looks like a million. What's the matter? Can't you swim? Oh, sure. Didn't you know? I was the first woman to swim the English Channel both ways. Underwater. <laughs> well, come on. Follow me. I'll teach you how. Shoulders are white.
I'm not gonna bring you back here till, till you learn how to swim. It's too dangerous. I don't know what I'd do if anything ever happened to you. Find a girl your own age. There must be plenty of them. It's a big city. Oh, now, listen, Millie. You're just lonesome, that's all. All right, I'm lonesome, too. But we can't have loneliness pushing us together because it wouldn't keep us together. Just loneliness reaching out for loneliness. I'm used to being alone. That isn't it at if all. If you knew a girl your own age, you wouldn't want me. And that isn't fair. So please, before things get any more complicated, Millie, please, I, I mean it. Millie? Millie? She did the right thing. You can't play tic-tac-toe with your personal feelings. That's disaster. A regular earthquake for the nervous system. That's the problem with leading a sheltered life. Someone comes along and you react like a schoolgirl. You don't know any better. Then the first thing you know, you've made a fool of yourself. And at my age, that is not very becoming. Oh, forget it. You've got the whole future ahead of you. The only trouble is with the future is it comes so much sooner than it used to. And while you're at it, forget about Bert, too. You say that as if you were reading my mind. I know who comes, who goes. I got other things to do besides watch the traffic in and out the bungalows. Night, Liz. Good night, Millie. So I just came in and waited. I'm glad it was unlocked. You are? Well, I... I wouldn't want you climbing through one of the windows. Some of the neighbors might not understand. Well, I think I, I would attract less attention coming through the window than I did coming through that squeaking door. 
Yeah, she sure looked nice, Millie. Oh, I stole this for you from your garden. Thank you for the flower and for the compliment. You always were a very gracious flower thief. You like the new record I got you? Very much. Isn't it strange how that lovely song reminds me of chicken salad? You know, we never did dance together. Thanks for the record. It's been a long time since I saw you. One month. One whole month. Thirty days. Thirty-one days. You dance nice, Millie. So soft and warm. Did I say something wrong? No, it's just that we were forgetting to dance. Don't be so frightened, Millie. I'm not. Or if I am, it's because I want to be. N not frightened. Just a little careful, cautious. Well, what's new with you? Eat, sleep, go to the movies. Oh! I got myself a job at Hathaway's department store. I've already been promoted as section manager. Oh, Bert, that's wonderful. At this rate, you'll soon be president. Then you won't have any promotions to look forward to. When did all this happen? Today. Today? Then what are you doing here? You should be out celebrating. Well, I... I was kind of hoping we could celebrate it together. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. Yes, I do. Bert, in some way, you feel obligated to me. I know what I feel. Because I was company for you when you were alone. But with your new job, you don't have to be alone anymore. That's all over. Millie, I, I've met a lot of people, but I'm still lonely. Uh, are I... you sure you're meeting live people? Well, they walk and they talk. Oh, Millie, I, I followed your advice. I went out on dates. I just found that young people are too young for me, that's all. I took out a girl from Lady Sportswear. Found out she was secretly in love with Gregory Peck. She had his autograph, so we sat and stared at it for one whole evening, like some mystic ceremony. Now, can you picture that? Yes, of course. You see, I'm in love with Gregory Peck, too. Matter of fact, I resent this girl's interfering with my secret love. Yeah, well, you can joke about it. And there was that girl from uh, Accessories and Leather Goods. I took her out, too. Ha! Oh, it couldn't be that bad. It was worse. She was a bubblegum addict. She was a what? A bubblegum addict. While oh, we're dancing, she's popping that gum in my ear. <laughs> as long as she danced well. Nah, she was a jitterbug. Oh, I enjoy them. Jitterbugs can be fun. Yeah, but with bubblegum popping in your ear? It depends upon her sense of rhythm. Oh, Millie, don't laugh at me. I tried. Honestly, I did. And there were a lot more on the list, too. Why go through it? I just didn't enjoy myself with them, that's all. Oh, Millie, you wouldn't want me to spend the rest of my life with a bubblegum addict. Would you, Millie? Sorry, I goofed. <laughs> you goofed? Hey, man, that's bop talk. Where'd you ever pick that up? Oh, why shouldn't I pick up an expression here and there? I'm not that old. Bert, what did you really come here for? To ask you to dinner and a movie. <sighs> dinner and a movie. Just to celebrate my new job. Okay. 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 Oh, I almost uh, forgot. 
I brought you a little uh, gift. Some uh, caviar. Eat with our popcorn. You're starting a new fad. Caviar and popcorn. Movies are really better than ever. Mm. Looks more like a dog leg to me. your place. I suppose we'll have these straight popcorn like everybody else. Mm, I love the smell of that. Look, Millie, I I've got something important to say right here and now. Look, I didn't come back today to go to a movie or, or to have a date or, or, or eat dinner or anything like that. I came back because I, I can't get you off my mind. Night and day, week in and week out, at the office, at home, I... Bert, listen. Didn't you ever know a girl your own age whom you liked? Yeah. Oh, it was a long time ago. It was uh, just high school stuff, that's all. I, I don't even really remember her. She... I guess you'd call her my steady girlfriend at the time. Whatever happened to her? Who knows? I grew up and went my way, and I guess she went her. I wish you'd marry me. Bert, listen to me. Uh, you've been gone a month. Nothing has changed. I'm a month older and so are you, but nothing else is different. Let me finish. Look, you can walk out on me if you, if you want to, but you've got to hear me out. Millie, you're special. You're like no other girl I've ever known or ever expect to know. You're so special, I'm afraid to say it, but I've got to. No, no, you don't, darling. Not really. You don't know how much it is, really. Look, Millie, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. No more being alone for you or for me. But I've got to know tonight whether you want me or not, because if you don't, I, I've got to stop this phony dreaming. I just can't, can't keep it up, that's all. Bert, listen to me and listen carefully. You're, you're mixing up things. You're confusing a need for me with, well, I, I don't know what, but that's all it is, Bert, just a need. But you mustn't let it drive you into thinking impulsively or you mustn't let it make you do anything impulsively. Let's look at it this way. We met, you were filled with a need, I was filled with a need. But people don't... Well, they shouldn't go around getting married because they're lonely, simply because they need each other. But it can also happen like this. Two people meet each other and right away they know. I love you, Millie. You love me? I love you. And if you'll take a chance, I mean, will you take the chance? You, you don't have to answer that. Want to go back and see the rest of the movie? No. I just want to go home. Would you mind telling me why you turned me down? I'd honestly like to know. Look, I, I tried to tell you once before. I'm older than you are. It's just...
cost too much, that difference. It isn't because I don't like you. Of course I do. That's not the reason. Thanks for trying to make it easy on me. Oh, it is the reason, and the only reason. It just couldn't work. I've got my nerve asking you to spend the rest of your life with me. Bert Hansen, big deal. Big nothing. Well, this is it, huh? Bert? Bert? Can a girl change her mind? Oh, Millie. Oh, Millie, don't make it so rough on a guy. No, never. Never again, I promise. Millie, let's get married right away. We'll rent a car, we'll drive down to Mexico, we'll be married before you have a chance to change your mind. I'll pick you up at eight. Okay? Okay. And I hope you'll never, ever be sorry. I won't be. I hope you won't be, but I never will be. did was say, see. I didn't say I do once. You want to say I do? I just did. Meanwhile, back at the bungalow court, you think Liz can get along without us all right during our honeymoon week? Why did you tell the girl who filled out the marriage license that you were born in Chicago? Because I was born in Chicago. I, I thought you once said Racine, Wisconsin. Born and raised in Racine. Not me. Must have been some other fellow you wanted to hook. No, you're the one I wanted. I'm glad I hooked you. Makes me feel more and more satisfied. Do you know something? No. I don't know something. I don't feel like going to work today. How about that orange juice? Orange juice. Breakfast now being served. Dining car, two cars in the rear, lady. Now I know why you married me. For my cooking. Your, uh, cooking? My cooking. That's a good one. Canned orange juice, instant coffee, and I'm still trying to find some canned buttered toast. I'll tell you what I really like about you. The way you sleep at night. With your nose all crinkled up, I could strangle you the way you pull the covers off me, leaving me cold and shivering. When I look at you in the morning, I can always think of reasons not to go to work. I wouldn't want to impede the progress of my future assistant buyer. You're impeding pretty good right now. Happy anniversary. Week anniversary, the second one. All right. Happy second week of anniversary. Oh, Bert, remember what I told you. 
Don't bring home any more presents. Yes, Mrs. Hanson. Of course, Mrs. Hanson. Indeed, Mrs. Hanson. Well, you are Mrs. Hanson. I mean it, Bert. About the presents. We've been celebrating all week. First the candy dish, then the portable bar, and then the... We won't have any money to go anywhere. Sure we will. I don't have to pay for the stuff. I just signed for it. It comes off my next paycheck. You don't have to pay for it this week, Bert, but you have to next week. But it's this week we're going to celebrate. Hello, Inez. Here you are, here. We said he'd come by early, but not this early. Come on. Anybody there? Come in, Colonel. Colonel Hillier, this is my husband, Bert Hanson. How do you I'm do? I'm sorry I'm not dressed, but I'm afraid I overslept this morning. I just got the news from Mrs. Eckert. Congratulations. My best wishes for the future and all that sort of thing. Thank you so much. I suppose Mrs. Welby will... <laughs> Mrs. Hanson, you'll be retiring soon. Not until after I finish typing your manuscript. Last installment, huh? See, I don't believe in married women working. Crucible of war, huh? You see much combat? Military intelligence? Oh, yeah? I was in the combat infantry myself. It's been over two years with 322nd. Goodbye, dear. Yeah, we had over 40% casualties. Good day, Mrs. Hanson. I'd be glad to tell you about it if it would help. You see, we got sent straight over from the States. We didn't even stop off in Japan. I remember once we got stuck about Seoul. Boy, those mortar shells were coming in like... looking for Bert Hansen. I'm Mrs. Hansen. Can I help you? Oh, it's very important I see Bert. Is he in? Bert? No, he just left. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I'm Virginia Hansen. Did Bert tell you we were married once? Oh, I see he didn't. Honestly, I'm sorry. He should have told you. Let's just like him. Did you say you were married to my husband? Up until about a month ago. That's when I got my final decree. But Bert doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> you look sick. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Hanson? I'm a little confused. I know how you feel. I was married to him, too. You must be mistaken. After all, the name Bert Hansen isn't a very unusual one. Bert couldn't have changed too much. The younger man in the picture is my husband. The other man is Bert's father. Did he tell you anything about him? Only that he died several years ago. I can see he's very much alive. As a matter of fact, I bumped into him the other day. He's here in Los Angeles on a vacation. At the uh, Chapman Park Hotel, I think. Were you, uh, were you married in Racine? Why Racine? We're from Chicago. That's where we were married. Please bear with me. I... How long were you married? Four years. We'd known each other for a long time before that. We went to school together. Everybody kind of figured we were natural, especially Bert's father. Yet you divorced him. Well, what would you do? One day he just walked out. No goodbye, no, no nothing. Quit me, quit his job. We were frantic. And then in the meantime, we heard about some trouble he'd gotten into before he enlisted. Shoplifting. Just little things. They came and took back some little presents he'd given me. We thought divorce was the only thing. You, you keep saying we. Well, Bert's father. He was really going crazy. He made good to the stores. He's a wonderful man. Bert's father, I mean. He's very kind and considerate. 
Obviously, you came here for a reason. Well, yes. I'd, I'd like Bert to sign some papers. His father gave us a small piece of income property as a wedding gift, and I'd like Bert to sign a property settlement. I'm sure he won't mind. The envelope is addressed to me, and I I'm staying here with some friends. If when he signs it, you'll just mail it to me. I'll see that he gets them. I hope there won't be any trouble. There won't be. Thank you again. I appreciate it very much. I'll... I'm sorry. Well, how did you find out about Bert and me? Oh. We... We had one of those agencies, you know. They traced him to the army and later to Tijuana and then to you. That's when we got the newspaper clipping. You just can't believe a word he says. That's what the police said once when they picked him up. He just lies. Well, thanks again. I, I know how you must feel. to ask for forgiveness. I didn't mean to. No, no, you're right. I'm wrong. Put me on the debit side. My full name in red ink. <laughs> I admit it. I'm a self-educated failure. I don't know what to do. To do or not to do, that is the question. You know, I could spend every night reading the classics. But the problem facing us is what to do about Bert. Well, it's simple. You say the word, I'm ready to serve your best interests and help save Bert. What makes you so sure that Bert needs to be saved? And what is he to be saved from? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, I am upset. Why shouldn't I be? I'm his wife. And if you're the father... Forgive me, Mr. Hanson. Oh, no, 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 no. You're right to protect him. You know, you're more than a good wife. You're like a friend and a mother. I envy Bert having you to... Help snap him out of it. But let's take my position. Like in the storybooks, we have a hero and a heroine. But I'm not your villain. What I am will uh, we'll let the gods decide. But in the back of my mind, I carry the memory of a nightmare. Bert is, or was, capable of lying about anything. It was a sad thing for me to learn the real facts. That's why I'm so glad to hear you say this is all part of the past. When did it, this lying start? Does it matter? Well, it might help tell us why he lied. Must you have excuses for him? Excuses? I'm looking for an explanation. But to find out that your only son is a deadbeat, a liar, a thief... But he's not like that, not now. He has a good job in a department store, and as I told you, he's already had a promotion. He says he has. If he says he has, it. If it makes you feel better to think that. Have you been down to the store? Have you seen him? Look, I'd like to believe he's everything you say he is. But... My son is no good. That's his past record. I put trust in such records. He was, he still might be, a lost soul. If he is, no one is going to save him. Not anyone. Still, you uh, have faith in him. 
Someone should. You've been very kind to let me come talk to you. Well, I... I hope to see you again while I'm here. Bert will want to see you. That's what he wants. I want it too. After all, it's a father's duty to be concerned about his son. But what he ought to do, I think, is go to a hospital. You've listened, but you haven't heard one word I've said. Uh, we'll see. But maybe you can give him enough help and strength yourself. I certainly hope so for both of you. Yes. Yes, send up some ice, too. 406. She give you a bad time, Mr. Hanson. It's quite a hunk of woman, but it's got himself. I wonder how we managed to get her. She could also make things pretty difficult. But she might be too shrewd for her own good. Isn't it her problem? And he is. shopping bag to carry it all. I stopped off with that new delicatessen on Wilshire. What are your feelings about uh, salami and garlic pickle? And some beer, too. You can sit down and relax like the rich folk. Can I fix your drink? No, thanks. Never mind. Oh, uh, I brought you something. Do you remember you saying you wouldn't? Well, I got it just before we closed. No time for a gift wrap. I'll open it after dinner. What's wrong? Did I forget something? Why didn't you tell me? Couldn't you trust me? I'm entitled to the truth, aren't I? Well, what's happened? Were you at the store today? Yes, I was at the store today. Oh. I saw you behind the counter. That's very pretty. That's very pretty. My own wife spying on me. But I had to. I had to find out. What kind of a disguise did you wear? Were you dressed as a trusting wife? Did you call the FBI and tell them your husband wasn't a section manager but a tie salesman? Or did you have me photographed at the scene of the crime with a crumpled tie in one hand? Bert, stop it! it! It wasn't nice of me. You're right, it, it, it was an indecent thing for me to do. But I had to find out. Millie. Oh, Millie, yeah. Millie, no matter what you think of me, I love you and I wouldn't hurt you for anything. Bert. Why did you have to pretend? I didn't marry you because I thought you'd be president of Hathaway store one day. All right, forget it. Forget it? What about all those presents? I made a mistake. I wanted to be a thoughtful, remembering husband. Even if it meant stealing them? No, Millie. I signed for them. Oh, they wouldn't let you, not on your salary. You, you took them. You could be arrested. Don't you understand that? They've all got to go back. The, the portable bar, the, the radio, everything. All right. All right. I'll take them back in the morning. And then everything will be all right. 
We can forget about it, can't we, Millie? Can't we? Isn't there anything else you want to tell me? Anything at all? What is this, a, a third degree, a quiz game? Or... What about the past? What, what happened to you? What, what'd you do? What happened to you before you met me? Millie, I have no past. My life began the night I met you. Well, I wish it were as easy as that. Virginia was here today. Virginia? Why didn't you tell me you were married before? Oh, oh, Millie, that was kid stuff. That was a long time ago. I'd forgotten about it. It just isn't important. Isn't important? Marriage? Divorce? They're too important for anyone to forget about. You didn't know Virginia had divorced you when you married me. How dare you make me a party to bigamy? And how can you go around in that kind of dream world remembering only the things you want to remember? Millie, Millie, you're the only thing that's real to me. Nothing else matters. Bert, I'm your wife. You have a responsibility to our marriage. I have a right to know, haven't I? Yes. I never... I never loved her the way I love you. I'm glad. And I'm, I'm sure that's true. But you still have to tell me. Oh, tell you what? Everything. Why not let me help decide what's right and what isn't? Bert? Bert? Look, the present is made up of little bits of the past. You can't just throw it out of your mind like something used up and worthless. You must tell me, please. She was my first girl, that's all. The one I told you about. Well, after you got married, then what happened? Did you go to work right away? Yes, but that kid stuff is ancient history. What are we hashing it over for? All right, so I went to work instead of school. I needed money for an apartment. After we saved enough, we went out looking, that's all. Any more questions? Yes. There are more questions. I want to know why you never told me before. The reason I asked... Oh, now, look, you... Millie, it just isn't important. Our house was more of a, of a toy house than a real one. Oh, but you sound as if you and Virginia never even lived together. Oh, I get it. Now, you want all the details, the ugly details, my frank confession. Well, there's nothing to tell. All right. So I got an apartment. It, it had stairs that went from the living room up to the bedroom. It just isn't important, Millie. That's why I never mentioned it. Don't you see? Yeah, I, I guess I see. But wouldn't it be better to mention it now? Then we'll never talk about it again. Wouldn't it be easier that way? Easier for you and for me? Wouldn't it? All right, maybe, maybe we did get married, but we were just kids playing grown-up, that's all. And then? And then? Yes, and then what happened? Well, I'm not sure. You're not sure about what? I... I did a crazy thing one day. I came home at around noontime to give her a surprise present for our six-month wedding anniversary. She wasn't expecting me. I just wanted to surprise her. I figured... I, I don't know what I figured. I, I don't know. You don't know what? Well... I can remember going up the stairs, but I can't rem remember coming down. What do you remember at the top of the stairs? I think nothing at all. Who was there? Was there someone else? Was there someone with Virginia? No, 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 Millie. Why do you keep all asking me? All right, all right. I'm sorry. All right. If there are things you don't want to talk about, don't even want to remember them, forget it. But darling, why did you tell me your father was dead? My father? Yes, I saw him today. He's out here on vacation. Well, I just felt he was dead. I still feel he's dead. What's everybody trying to do to me? I told him how well you were doing. And that you'd come to see him tomorrow. I'll go with you if you want. Well, Millie, I, I think we're going to be very busy at the store taking inventory. And then there, are there all those things you want me to take back? There'll still be time for you to see your father. I'll meet you after work.
Oh, Millie. Millie, I'll do anything, anything you want, anything in the world, but, but please don't ask me to go to see you. <laughs> you must. You must for his sake as well as yours. Bert, look at me. Oh, darling. Donnie, you can't keep on pretending you haven't got a father. You do have one, and he loves you very much. Did, did you say he was alone? All alone, living at the Chapman Park Hotel. All right. I'll go if you want me to. Bert, I didn't mean to force you. If I sounded that way, I'm sorry. I'll go. I'd like to see Mr. Hanson. Oh, yes. Mr. Hanson's suite is 406, but I think he's out by the pool. That's right around here, left. Oh, has, uh, has Mr. Hanson's son asked for him yet? No, not since I've been on. I see. Thank you. to his father's suite. That's 406. Dear, are you ready? Darling? I asked you if you were ready. Ready? 
Remember, I told you we were going for a walk. We could use the fresh air. Oh, come on, darling. You haven't been out of the house for days. It would be good for us to get out of the house for a change. I'll be right back. What do you want? I came to see Bert. I still haven't received those signed papers. Get away from here. You can't see him. But what about those papers? I can't bother him now. He can't see anybody. He's sick. When he's well enough, I'll get him to sign the papers. Now, will you please get out of here? Well, of Hello. Can I be of any help? No, Bert's sick. And if he sees you, will you take her and get out of here? Well, I want to help. Just the idea of your help sickens me. Aren't you being unreasonable? I won't waste the time, and I haven't the heart left to be reasonable with you, Mr. Hanson. I see. Well, you won't stop me from seeing Bert. I've got to get back to Chicago Did you tomorrow. you say Bert was sick? Yes. Sounds like a cheap trick to me. I won't have him disturbed any further. He's emotionally upset. Emotionally upset? Oh, I get it. So he finally cracked up. Saw it coming a long time ago. In that case, the situation demands immediate action. I want to protect Virginia's rights. He must sign these papers now. Right now. Or else I'll have to have him committed. And if you try to stop me, I'll have you put in jail so quick you won't know what hit you. It won't be hard to have him declared incompetent. And believe me, I will. Will you shut up? I will not shut up. I want what's coming to me, uh, to Virginia. I'm tired of begging for what's rightfully mine. If necessary, I'll take legal action. If you take my advice, the place for him is an institution. You cut off a leg to save a life or put him away in some hospital or other where he can't do anybody any harm. You're his wife. Authorize some head shrinker to go to work on him. Get it over with. Sure, he should be committed. Of course, you want me to commit him. Get him out of your life. Put him away permanently someplace where he can never again remind either one of you of your horrible guilt. How you and you committed the ugliest of all possible sins. So ugly that it drove him into the state he's in now. What kind of a woman are you to be satisfied that there's only half a man? There must be something wrong with Even you. Even when he doesn't know what he's doing, he's a saner man than you are. He's decent and proud. Can you say the same for yourselves? Where's your decency? In what garbage dump, Mr. Hanson? And where's yours, you tramp? I don't have to listen to that. She's the one who's crazy. You have to be crazy to be put up with that weakling. You is loving, doting fraud of a father. And you, you slut. Are you listening? You're both so consumed with evil. So rotten. Your filthy souls are too evil for hell itself. My attorney will take care of you. I got him to sign. I have him put away where he belongs. You know, I, uh, I, I was just thinking. We might rent a car and take a drive down to the beach. It might be fun. Don't you think so? Of course, we'll still take our walk. Bert, you're smiling. I thought of something. I've been sitting here for a long time trying to add things up, and now I know the whole score. I feel like I've been born again. Born again? You conniving tramp. They couldn't get anywhere with me, my father and Virginia. And they couldn't have picked a better partner for the deal. Could they? You're in a key spot, aren't you? They figure you can talk me into anything, and then you'll all divide it three ways. Bert, could you for one moment possibly think... Now, that property belonged to my mother. And you're not going to get it, no matter what tricks you play. Not you, or my father, or Virginia. And especially not you, because you, I can stop personally. Bert, I wouldn't turn against you if it meant my life. You are my life. Everything I love. I'm trying to get away. You've made your bed. Nothing but lies, turning against me. You know what you deserve. No more 
alive. I saw all three of you through the door, all lovey-dovey. You think I didn't know? I knew. Now get up. Don't sit there looking innocent when I get up. I told you I knew. I knew it and now I know it! I knew it and I knew it! You're all against me! It's almost healed now. Good. And Bert, what do you say about him? Nothing. They haven't met yet. How is that possible? He's been coming to your place for a couple of weeks now to fix up your hand. I know, but he, he's seen Bert many times, but they just haven't really met yet. How's Mr. Hanson? I thought he was sleeping. Frankly, I'm not an expert in these matters, but I think he needs some specialized treatment. For the last two weeks, I've been coming to see you. I'm very grateful to you, Doctor, but I, I couldn't get away from my work. Yet every time I've seen your husband, I don't think he's ever seen me. He's very troubled. I hope you'll forgive me, but I've taken the liberty of discussing him, without mentioning any names, of course, with Dr. Cousins, Malcolm Cousins, one of the best psychiatrists in the country. I've never had an occasion to know a psychiatrist, and I don't want to. No one ever wants to. But if you should need one, here's Cousin's address, etc., etc. Call him when you wish. Thank you. I'd suggest soon. Well, if that isn't all better by Thursday, you call me. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Mrs. Hanson. Hey, how about some room service? All right, but... Come on. I'm lonely. Why? You look so rested. Hey, were you talking to somebody in there? Mm-hmm, the doctor. Did you nap well? Mm-hmm. I'll get you something to eat. First, a bowl of soup, right? Oh, wait a minute, Millie. I think, uh, I think you got something on your shirt there. Where did that come from? You must have been practicing. You know, it's a funny thing, like that kiss. I can't remember when we did it last. Seconds. Mm-hmm. I'll get you the soup. Hey, what happened to your hand? Well, I told you. I, I tried to go in two different directions at once. It was very stupid of me. Oh, yeah, I remember. Well, let me see your black eye. Oh, no. <laughs> No, it's fascinating, but only to me. Very interesting. It changes colors well, every day. Say. Oh, no, I'm not going to take the glasses off. It's too embarrassing. There's something unladylike about a black eye on a woman. I'll get you a soup. Oh, <laughs> 
you left the door open. <laughs> Uh, I want to go down the stairs. Somebody help me from the stairs! I want to stay! Bert, 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 listen to me. I'll help you. I'll show you the way down the stairs. Come with me. I'll show you the way, darling. I'll help you. I just wanted to give her a present. I'll help, darling. I just wanted to give her a present. You'll be all right. Darling, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. How quickly and how easily can he be cured? <laughs> quickly and easily. I have no license for handing out miracles with a guarantee. He must be placed in a hospital where his case can be studied and where he'll get treatment. You want me to commit him to make him a mental patient? I, I couldn't do such a horrible thing. He he's like a child. Yes, like a child with his mother. But a child has to grow up. It's terrible enough leaving him alone for just a few minutes. You're asking me to commit him. Even if he did get well, he wouldn't want to live, knowing all of his life he'd be known as a mental case. Mental disorder is just another illness. It won't go away simply because you'd rather ignore it. It'll get worse. I'm talking about his infantilism and all the other elements of his schizophrenic pattern. Now he's rejected the world around him. He's become, as you've told me, unable to make a decision. He refuses to see anyone, even the delivery people. His dependence on you, all these are common symptoms of his particular illness. But don't you think if I gave him enough love and understanding, he wouldn't have to go away? Wouldn't that be sufficient? Obviously, he's getting as much love and understanding as you can possibly give him. What he needs is expert medical treatment. The time for him to be able to accept your love will come later. Right now, I see a healthy organism, you, going to pieces because of his illness. You're offering me very little choice. I'd say I'm offering you no choice. How can you expect me to be so cruel, so insensitive? Me to be the one to hurt him? I expect you to have the necessary strength to act. It takes the greatest kind of love and mercy to commit a person, even into the hands of qualified experts. But he's my husband. I love him too much. I couldn't do that to him. You can't go on like this. You're only helping to destroy him and yourself. He'd be all alone with strangers. You see, I, I'm the only one he trusts. I... If I've sounded harsh or unkind, it's because you're resisting me. You mustn't, for your husband's sake and for your own. He's retrogressing, becoming a child again, as he continues to disintegrate as a You're person. deliberately telling me all this just to frighten me. Deliberately, yes, but to advise you. And before you throw that ashtray at me, may I remind you that you don't have to be convinced this very minute. Think about it. Watch his behavior. If you see any truth in what I've said, then... Well, don't wait too long. Doctor, how long would he be away? The therapy in a good sanitarium isn't always a long, drawn-out affair, but be prepared for his being away from home and confined for at least five or six months. I know I've upset you, but then... that isn't really important, is it? You're not the patient. Or are you? I thought you'd get around to that. In your world, everyone's crazy. And I don't know everyone in my world. I don't feel qualified to answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're used to it. Look, you, you've told me all the terrible things that could happen. Is there any hope for Bert? Of course there is. We don't like to make idle promises, but we've been getting the most remarkable results. In most instances, complete recoveries. Patients have come to us having no contact with reality, only to change, become adjusted, and develop a new set of emotional values that enable them to be, to live again. To live again? That's like being born again, isn't it, Doctor? It's quite like that. Let's say that 
Bert is as sick as you make him out to be. And let's say that he does go to the sanitarium and, and that he's cured. Well, the, the question is, might he come out not, not needing me, not loving me? That is possible, isn't it? I hardly know the patient. I can't be dogmatic. One thing, however, is quite obvious. He married you because of a great many needs interwoven with his neurosis. When you remove that neurosis, you might also remove the feeling he has for you, since he wouldn't have the same needs. In fact, he shouldn't have those neurotic needs if he's to become well. Am I a neurotic need? What you're really trying to tell me is that if Bert is cured, I might lose him. Is that right? The possibility exists. But would you rather keep Bert as your husband at the expense of his becoming a helpless psychotic and ruin two lives, your own and his? Or have him return to a happy, normal life, even if it might mean losing him yourself? Do you really think any woman in love could answer that question? <laughs> Bert, you've got to stop it. Bert, can you hear me? This is Mrs. Hanson. This is nice and hot. Millie, really, you'd never leave me. Would you? Darling, I want you to remember one thing, and please try to remember it. I love you with all my heart. But you never leave me. Would you? Mind? Look, whatever happens. Millie, don't Bert, let him... you've got to trust me. Oh, Millie, don't let him take me away. I'll be good. I'll do anything you say, but. Oh, I'll never do anything. Say no, 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 Millie. Bert, I didn't do it. Honestly, I'm all right. Bert, you must trust me, darling. I'm all right. Take it easy. I really, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, you didn't do this. I guess you You did this. 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 Ah, I didn't do anything wrong! I didn't do anything wrong! I didn't do anything! I didn't do anything wrong! I didn't do anything wrong! I didn't do anything wrong!
private sanitarium isn't always a long, drawn-out procedure, but be prepared for his being away from home and confined for at least five or six months. Five or six months. Five or six months. Five or six months. When you remove that neurosis, you might also remove the feeling he has for you. in this room any longer. I was walking. Walking? A fine time to be walking. It came. The letter from Bert. What's wrong? Millie, what's wrong? It isn't from Bert. It's from the sanitarium. It says that Bert will be discharged next Friday and they ask that I come up to Bring him home. Well, that's good. Ain't that good? Why me? Why should I go? They ought to know by now he doesn't want me, doesn't need me anymore. Oh, don't make it sound so definite. The question's still open, ain't it? He never wrote me not one word. Never asked for me, never wanted to see me, never anything. Oh, he's been sick. You've said it a thousand times. Never. Give him a break, Millie. Okay, so now he's better try and help him just once more. Help him to do what? What should I do, go up there and act casual? Quote, hello, Bert, darling, it's so good to see you again. My, you're looking well, unquote. Then what do I do? Beg him to come home? And when he says no, what do I do? Smile sadly and walk away into the sunset? You've got to go, Millie. It's not making it any easier, just torturing yourself like this. You're the only one that can find out how he really feels. Nobody can help you now. Why can't they? When do I get my turn? Everybody needs help, don't they? I need help, too. Maybe I don't want to find out how he feels. Being in love is never easy. And the more in love you are, the less easy and more lonesome it gets. You're talking to an expert on being lonely. Remember? 
Bert's bound to be grateful. I don't want him back because he's grateful, because he's obligated, and I... I can't take being hurt anymore. <laughs> And how does your garden grow? Oh, hi, Miss Evans. Say, you know, you're looking prettier every day. How do you do it in that, in that cast iron uniform, anyway? Oh, I need it to protect me from the x-ray eyes of certain patients. Ah, uh, you're crazy. Who isn't? That's right, who isn't? Hey, now, wait a minute, I'm not. Now, they may be, but I'm not. Well, what makes you so sure? Oh, scuttlebutt. I hear they're getting rid of me in a couple of days. It's not a terrible thing to do to a perfectly normal guy. I mean, take him away from everything he's gotten used to. Rough. But we're not running a transient type hotel, you know. We need the pet space. Oh, you mean there are other nuts running around here? Please. Hey, some of my best friends are in joints like this. Anyway, you're getting your walking papers and diploma today. Now, how does your garden grow? Well, with silver bells and cockle shells and very pretty maize. It's routine to ask the nearest relative to come and meet the patient on graduation day. Don't bother to introduce us. Mrs. Hanson and I have already met. Goodbye again. Hello, Bert. I spoke to the head of the sanitarium, Dr. Williams himself. He had nothing but glowing things to say about you. How you had written to Virginia and your father and told them to stay out of your life and that they could have the signed papers. But I'm part of your past too, Bert. You didn't say goodbye to me. And I want you to have this chance to cut yourself off completely from all things past, including me. I know you're still angry with me for sending you here, and I can't blame you. It isn't very nice to be sent off to a sanitarium, no matter what name they give it. It's unpleasant and, and cruel, very cruel. But when we were together, if you had cut yourself accidentally and were bleeding to death, I, I would have done anything to have stopped that bleeding. I wouldn't ask myself what's pleasant and what's not cruel. And if you're worried about anything, Bert, please don't be, because, well, the, the important thing is that you're well again. I, I told you once I wasn't very good at small talk, and here I am making small talk. I, I, I guess I'm... I'm sorry, Bert. I, I guess I'm just a little nervous about... I, I'm not feeling sorry for myself. Honestly, I'm not. You're free, Bert, completely free to make any choice you wish. And I, I won't hold it against you. Not, not for very long, that is. After you left, I, I told myself that life isn't one long honeymoon and that, well, people have to grow up and, and get your happiness like real adults. Now, um, uh, about your clothes, uh, I'll send them. You just leave a forwarding address. Miss Evans is a very pretty young girl, isn't she? A nurse, too. No Miss Bubblegum or, or Miss Jitterbug. Or is she? Well, I, I guess that just about takes care of everything. So I'll, I'll wish you luck and say goodbye. Millie, let me see your hand. My hand? The one I hurt with the typewriter. The scar's almost gone. You didn't even give me a chance to say hello. Did you want a chance? Hello, Millie. I think people are staring at us. What do you care? No, let them. Since you went away, the days grow long, and soon I'll hear old winter song but i miss you most of all my darling when autumn leaves